Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups. The first being Fans of Serif Software and the other one is Affinity Design and Photo Group. Now in this tutorial I want to show you three different ways of making a photo into a sort of pencil sketch. Um, the first way would be a sort of very basic pencil sketch and then there will be sort of a, a midway point and then the last one would be a more detailed pencil sketch and we might be even add a bit of colour to that as well. Now before I jump ahead and show you how to do that I will say that the first two ways you can make a macro of them so you can save them for future use and you don't have to keep going through this whole process all the time. Um, I won't show you sort of how to make a macro and what have you because that's been dealt with in other tutorials. But I will just show you the two that I have made and the difference it will make to certain images. I have two images open. This one I took myself of a train at Hive Station and this other one which I, I got from pixabay.com. Now this picture here sort of does lend itself pretty well to sort of the basic um, sketch part of this because it's there's not a lot of well there's a lot of detail but it's sort of very open and easy to see everything so you know the p tutorial part of it will come pick out the details a lot easier but this other image because it's especially because it's quite dark in a lot of places it, the, the basic way of doing a sketch will struggle to convert this picture so you may want to choose one of the other options for an image like this so to show you what I mean uh, let me just open my library um, and you can open your library by going to the um, view menu down to studio and then library is in there but I've, I've set up a shortcut for it which is why it opened quite easily so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both of these macros that I've made on both images so you can see the differences so first of all I'm going to go with the basic sketch I'll click on that let me move this to the middle you can see it did a pretty good job on that because there's the details were easy for it to find so I'll press Control and Z to go back to that image and I will go for the I've called this detail sketch but this is the sort of second way of doing the sketch that I'm going to show you later on and I'll click on that just wait a little while and as you can see it's it is a more detailed looking image than the previous not just all basic lines so I'll then move on to this second picture and first go with the basic sketch and as you can see this this way has really struggled especially in the dark areas there's not so much detail for this to pick up so I'll press Control Z and I'll pick the more detailed macro and as you can see it I mean, it still does struggle a bit especially in the dark areas but like the chair here you've got a lot more detail showing up so depending on your image will depend on which version of this tutorial that you want to use um, so I will just reset everything and then I'll be back in a little while Okay, this uh, basic sketch part of the tutorial, I'm going to use this part of the uh, image of the train because it does lend itself better to the basic sketch rather than the image of the two people. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you've opened your image is come up to filters and then detect and then find edges. 
Now this will make the majority of the image black. Um, so we need to invert this. So we come to layer and then down to invert or you can just press control and I. So we, as you can see, we now pretty much already have our pencil sketch, but there is a sort of a hint of color in here. So we just want to remove that. So I'm going to come to the adjustments and I'm going to click on black and white. Now at this point you could tinker with sort of some of the colors that are in the image and sort of bring back certain areas to add a bit more detail or less detail depending on the effect that you are trying to get. I'm hoping you can see the effect this is having as I'm clicking on this. Um, so this is probably if you don't make a macro of this and you want to do it this way you could then sort of tinker with the end result um, on an individual image basis. But when you're happy with your end result you can just click on merge And if I come back to the layers here, now at this point you could save or export this image as it stands, or you could add a levels adjustment and then use the gamma slider to alter again how much shows and sort of how dark, how dark certain areas are and just fine tune your selection that way again once you're happy just click on merge and then at this point is where you save or export it under a new name so that is how quick that is to do the very basic sketch so I will reset things again and be back in a little while Okay, moving on to the second sketch type. Now this I've seen on various Photoshop tutorials um, and it does give a sort of a sort of midway point between the basic sketch and the next part of the tutorial. And um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this background layer. Now if you're making the macro of this sort of to make a black and white version of this you don't need to do this part of this because I'm just going to use this as sort of just of adding a hint of color to the image um, and as macros at, as Affinity Photo stands at the moment you can't record changing the selection of the layers so which is very annoying um, and if there is a way around that that people can tell me, you can just let me know in any comments that you want to make. Um, so if you're making a macro, you don't need to duplicate this. But I'm going to I'm going to duplicate this just, and then I'm going to hide it, and I'll come back to that a bit later. So I will then just highlight the bottom layer, and. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to make this image black and white. Now you could just you could go with the black and white option, but for quickness I'm just going to use the hue saturation slider and then just quickly move it down to minus 100, and I'm going to merge that into the layer, and then I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode of this newly duplicated black and white layer. And I'm going to change that to color dodge. And then I'm going to come up to the layers menu and I'm going to invert this. So you can do control and I. And as you can see, you pretty much lose 
a lot of the image is only the really dark areas that are showing up um, but this is okay this is what we're, the effect we are after um, because what we're going to do now is add a blur effect to this layer and I'm going to do this via a new live filter layer so I'll come up to the layer menu new live filter layer Gaussian blur filter and then it's just a case of moving the slider just to bring back whichever part of the drawing or the effect of drawing that you want to. I mean, if you go too high it's just going to pretty much go back to being almost the black and white image you started with. So it's a case of finding that point where you want the detail to be look more like a pencil drawing and once you're happy with that you can just click on merge so you then have your what would be two layers if you are not going to add a hint of color and at this point you can save or export under a new name now if you do want to add a hint of color we can bring back this top layer make it visible and I'm just going to change the blend mode now I've tried a few of these and uh, the one I found best was hard light and then in case of just lowering the opacity of that just to give you that sort of hint of color but still making it look like a drawing I mean quite where you want to stop it looking less like a drawing is up to you but I'm going to put that on about 14 percent so if I just that'd be like the black and white drawing and that is just a drawing with a hint of color so that is the end of this part of the tutorial and I'll be back in a minute okay moving on to the last part of this tutorial and this is going to be a sort of slightly more detailed sketch and you do have a bit more control over adding color if that is what you want to do um, and it's pretty much the start of this is pretty much the same as like the second midway version that I showed you and in that I will duplicate this layer and I will hide that because this is the layer I'm going to use to bring back color if we so desire. I'm going to highlight the bottom layer and like before I'm going to desaturate this just by quickly dropping the saturation down to minus 100 and merging that in and then I'm going to duplicate this layer I'm going to change the blend mode to color dodge and then I'm going to come to layer and invert now at this point in the previous part of the tutorial we used a Gaussian blur filter this time we're going to use a different blur filter um, and if I'm correct I don't think there is a live filter version of minimal I can't see it so we come to filters blur and down to minimum blur and as you can see instantaneously you've got a much more detailed image now this is mine is particularly set on 6.9 I think this is where I end up leaving it when I did my practice run um, I couldn't see it. there's a tick that you can add into this We're using either circular or I'm guessing the other option is sort of square type pixels um, I couldn't see any well in fact if I go really high you can see that they are square pixels 
if I click on that, they are round pixels. So I'm guessing that circular pixels will give you much smoother edges rather than square pixels. So I'm leaving mine on circular. And where you have this, again, is up to you. If you want a you know a very heavily outlined image, you can go quite high, but I'm going to leave mine. I leave it on six point five, and then just click apply. Now, when you click apply, it will alter slightly from how it looked before you clicked apply. In some cases, it, I found it does go slightly lighter, and sometimes it will go slightly darker. Quite why it doesn't say as it looks before you click apply, I, I can't explain, but just be aware that that will happen. And if you want to, you can then add a levels adjustment, and then either make it darker or lighter, depending on which way it went once you click the apply button so I'm just going to just lighten mine slightly and I will click merge on that so we have a like hopefully you can see that it's a much more detailed image than we were in the midway point of this tutorial um, so again at this point you can save and export under a new name but if you do want to add a hint of color I can bring back this top layer unhide it and again change the blend mode now using the minimum blur it does allow you to use a bit more of the blend modes um, you can use well you can use pretty much any of these that you want but Overlay is quite good. Soft light and hard light. Um, the hard light gives you more of a sort of um, sort of poster type look because you've got the black outlines around the image. But probably one of the best ones to use would be color, which is this one here, because it does give it that more penciled in look and feel and again you could alter the opacity just to give you sort of a subtle hint of colour I'm going to go to about 40% on that one so hopefully you see that that now looks more like a coloured pencil image with a lot more detail than in the previous versions so that is basically the end of the tutorial. You can just you know, save and export this under a new name. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And thank you for watching. And goodbye.